presentation is part two of the report on exams and services for primary and secondary school under the 14-17-2021. Part two will give you information about the work that we have done last session to support the health and well-being of our children and families. It will also share with you how we ensured our learners continued to make progress. Human Carmures, we used the word rainbow as an acronym, thinking about things that were important to us while we supported our children and families back into school following the COVID pandemic. Staff engaged in a range of online training programmes focusing on health and well-being, the impact of trauma following COVID and the importance of nurture for supporting a positive transition back to school. The Emotion Works programme has supported children to have, to, to have conversations about their experiences and feelings within a safe environment. All children were given the opportunity to meet with a chosen adult to discuss things in a more private way that they didn't want to share with the whole class. We created health and wellbeing transition plans for individuals who presented with specific anxieties or other concerns during the transition back to school. Class teachers were also given allocated time to work with individuals and groups of children within their classes to support relationships and positive health and well-being. One of the aspects of the Emotions Works programme was to increase the vocabulary that children have to express how they are feeling. We recognise that if children have the words to use, they are less likely to communicate their emotions through their behaviour. Our evaluation shows that all children benefited from this programme and are now more able to describe how they are feeling. The Emotion Works questionnaire evaluation on screen shows the average number of words by class and a comparison between September 2020 and June 2021. Another aspect of the programme was for children to be able to identify ways that they could help themselves when they were feeling upset. Our comparison study shows improvements at all stages in both the words that children can use to identify and describe emotions and also in the number of strategies that children could use to help them in dealing with difficult situations. A health and safety group was set up as a platform for children and staff to raise any concerns or ideas that they had for improving our approaches to COVID-19 safety in school. This group met with the head teacher via Microsoft Teams. We were also chosen for a COVID health and safety inspection, which we were really pleased to pass with no follow up actions required. Utilising the outdoor environment allowed children to reconnect with green spaces, play and spend time with each other. A focus on team building was successful in helping our two new composite classes to build relationships and get to know each other. The commitment of our principal teachers was to support the pastoral needs of children and to maintain strong communication with families. Having a PT or acting PT for each level of the school has supported both staff, children and families to have the additional support needed during this recovery session. They have been visible and available to deal with anxieties and difficulties quickly and effectively. Referrals to appropriate agencies and agreeing in school interventions as a priority has helped to ensure that children are receiving what they need to access their learning and to have a positive experience of school. 
Successful partnerships have also been effective in improving the health and well-being of our children. Our partnership with Tesco provides children with the opportunity to try a variety of fruits every Friday. We have recently secured a partnership with Greg's, meaning that every child will continue to be provided with breakfast every day. The individual and family support delivered by Bernardo's through our Pupil Equity Fund has supported the engagement of six families in their child's learning, as well as offering wellbeing support to both the parents and to the children. Priority this session has been to support families dealing with the impact of poverty. We worked with Falkirk Food Bank, Grace Church in Larbert and the Salvation Army to source winter clothing for 46 children. We managed to get Christmas toys for 18 families and a food shopping for over the Christmas period for 29 families. This reduced the stress felt by the families caused by the impact of increased poverty. Recognising the impact of this, we were then able to secure funding to provide food for our most vulnerable families during the upcoming summer break. A uniform exchange has been set up to enable families to access pre-loved uniforms for returning in August. In addition to this, 18 children also benefited from taking part in the Fairer Food Football Week in October. We have been very active in our community this session, learning about what we can do as a school to make Camelin a great place to live in for everyone. Our partnership with Our Place Camelin and Tamford Hill has provided opportunities for children to be decision makers positive activists and leaders of change within their community. Our partnership with Camelin Arts has given the children opportunities to express themselves and be creative this session while also learning about their local heritage. Maintaining a strong sense of community during a time when parents were not able to be present in school was a challenge, but it did encourage us to be creative. We recorded an online Christmas event for families, which included a community song and a quiz for everyone to take part in. Refreshments were sent home for the family to enjoy during the show. A small token which had a big impact on our children and families. As a follow-up, we just released a virtual pantomime prior to summer to spread a little joy around the school. Children and families have shown in their surveys and with comments how well supported they have felt during this difficult year. A sense of trust has been established between school and home through a realisation that to raise attainment we must break down barriers, reduce the impact of poverty and support the well-being of all. The results on screen are from the primary five to seven survey that we completed in May. We still have many children and families impacted by poor well-being and or mental health. The health and well-being of our children and families will always be at the heart of our school improvement. The pandemic has impacted on pupil attendance during lockdown, but also because of self-isolation and increased anxiety around COVID-19. Next session, we aim to support children and families to understand the benefits of regular good levels of attendance for improving what they can achieve. We will continue to put the rights of children at the centre of our work as we go for gold in the Rights Respecting School Award. Tackling the impact of poverty will be an ongoing priority across the next school session 
and beyond. The Emotion Works programme will continue to be used as our core resource for supporting social and emotional wellbeing, and our work with partner agencies will continue to be a strong focus for us. As a school, we are planning to work with Fourth Valley on the Thrive to Keep Well programme to support the mental health and well-being of our parents. On returning to school after five months being away, teachers used formative and summative assessments to create a class overview, highlight areas for targeted intervention. Each class had a support for learning assistant or early years officer who was able to facilitate small group targeted support where it was most needed. Training was given in the numeracy recovery programme at early and first level, and this was delivered to targeted groups by trained support staff. Using assessment data and implementing targeted interventions enabled some accelerated progress for children between December and June. A small increase in the number of children on track or ahead of expected progress in reading attainment a small increase in the number of children performing ahead of their expected progress in writing and a reduction of the number of children requiring individualised support in numeracy. Our early learning and childcare class and primary one class implemented the 10 book story approach to engage children in reading and storytelling. They engaged with the texts and showed improved ability to retell stories and talk about the characters in the books. The children in Primary 1 made links with authors and developed skills in reviewing the books that they had read. They benefited from making global links and from leading their own learning linked to the texts. We are proud that our Primary 1 class were the winners of the First Minister's primary one reading journey for Scotland. We invested in 20 additional iPads and introduced a digital learning platform called Seesaw from primary one through to primary seven. This supported communication between the class teacher and the parents during a time when they were unable to meet face to face. It has allowed parents to engage with their child's learning in and out of lockdown. 87% of parents stated that Seesaw was an effective tool for home and school partnership and in this academic session 92% of all parents have downloaded and are using the Seesaw family app. Already 14 out of our new primary one class have already signed up. When we returned in August, we ensured that we had a contingency plan ready and in place should we go back into lockdown. And when the second lockdown happened in January 2021, we had a plan which focused on feedback from our parents. We asked parents what they needed after the first lockdown and 40% of our parents who completed the survey said that their child had been disadvantaged due to lack of technology during the first lockdown. The table on your screen shows the order in which parents prioritised the different supports that they felt they would need. During the second lockdown, 36 iPads and 11 Wi-Fi hubs were given out to support children's learning. Seesaw allowed class teachers to continue with learning and teaching and differentiate for the groups and individuals in their classes. This was an excellent platform for giving children feedback on their learning. Online Teams calls were a popular way for peers to stay connected. After lockdown one, 62% of the children in primary five to seven reported engaging in learning at home only a couple of times, once or never during the five months lockdown. During lockdown two, 
between the 18th of January and the 19th of February, and that was the period it was tracked, we had an average weekly engagement of 80% of all children engaging in their learning on Seesaw. Progression in learning was able to continue during lockdown too, with teachers and pupils having the tools that they needed and the skills to use new approaches to learning and teaching. Class teachers have highlighted the important part that outdoor learning played this session in supporting children to settle back into school and their learning. Outdoor learning provided children with much needed time to play, reconnect with green space and have the chance to be active outside of the classroom. Teachers highlighted the positive impact that this has had on children's ability to concentrate in class, as well as improving pupils' relationships with each other. So what are our next steps? We will continue to build on our success with targeted interventions by prioritising additional support to individualised and small group programmes with the aim of having 85% of all children in Carnewars Primary School achieving their expected levels of attainment in all areas of literacy and numeracy. We will invest in training and analysing data. Our focus will be to identify and close the gaps in learning of our identified target groups and individuals. Principal teachers will provide direct teaching input as well as building the capacity of our support staff. We will introduce a peer tutoring approach to reading between primary seven and primary four three. We will self-evaluate against how good is our school, the quality indicator 3.2, raising attainment and achievement to learn more about what we can do to continue to improve.